in price discrimination, we sell the same product to different people depending on who they are or how much they buy or a combination of both. Price bundling is different. In price bundling, we combine two products into one, into one package, into one bundle, and we sell the bundle either instead of the individual products or in addition of the individual products. So a bundle of two products is effectively a way of offering a discount to customers who buy more than one product, because very normally the bundle costs less than the two individual or all the individual products that are part of the bundle would cost individually. There are two different types of bundling. There's pure bundling, where the products cannot be purchased individually. Think of your credit card, for example, where you cannot buy just the credit card without the insurance. They only go together. Or mixed bundling, where the products also can be purchased individually. Think of Amazon, when sometimes they recommend you two books that you can buy instead of only one. Now, when do these different strategies make sense and why? And to understand this, let's, let's look into books and let's look into Twilight, right? The story of a vampire and a werewolf. Uh, if you haven't read it, well, you didn't miss much. The important thing is it's a sequel of different books. So there's a book one and there's a book two. Book one is called Twilight and book two is called New Moon. Assume there are these two books, Twilight and New Moon, and there are two people in the market, Bob and Alice. Alice has already read one of these books as a library book. So her willingness to pay to buy it again is really low. However, she really likes the story, so her willingness to pay for the second book, for the sequel, is relatively high. Bob hasn't read any of these books, so his willingness to pay is about the same for product one and product two, and specifically for product two, it is less than the one for Alice, well, because he's less interested in the sequel since he has not even read the first book yet. Now, we have three different cases. Case one is there is no bundling. If there's no bundling, then the company would sell each product individually, and they usually would try to charge a price as high as possible. So in this example, they charge a price of P1 for product one and of P2 for product two. Alice's willingness for product one is far too low anyway, and she has no interest in buying a book that she has already read another time, but her willingness to pay for book two is really high, so she would sell, she would buy book two and the company would sell it to her. Now, the problem is that Bob likes those books, but not really that much. So his willingness to pay is too low for both books. So he doesn't buy anything, which means in this setting, the total profit of the company is just P2. Now, when we do bundling and we combine them together, we don't charge individual prices, we charge a sum of prices. So our horizontal and vertical line now suddenly becomes a diagonal line. And if you look at that diagonal line, you see that Bob is just over the threshold. So he would buy the bundle of two books. You can see it that way, that the unused willingness to pay that Bob had for each of these two products was so low, he was so far, he was so little away from both the horizontal and vertical line on the previous slide in case one, that now he's pushed over the diagonal line. However, for Alice, the bundle is too expensive because she gets a product she doesn't want to have. So in this case, we sell to Bob the bundle, P1 plus P2, but we don't say anything to Alice. And that's what can happen in pure bundling, that you sell the product to customers who don't have any of the products yet, but you stop selling it to people who might already have one of the products. Well, and I guess you see where this is going. We now move to the case third, which is mixed bundling, where everyone gets what they want. Bob is over the diagonal line, so Bob would buy the bundle, and Alice is over the vertical line, so she would only buy book two, and this is the case where the company makes most profit. Now, the problem with price bundling is not necessarily this. The problem with price bundling is that it is very often used in uh, antitrust and competitive environments. And there are three cases where price bundling is not allowed under antitrust consideration. The first one is where a bundle is used as a tool to raise the rival's cost. Take the following example. Assume you are a company that sells a certain type of machine, a printing press, for example, at a certain price. Now, at this point, you are, a you are a monopolist. Now you have a competitor entering the market who sells the same type of product, also a printing press, at a lower price. You know that the competitor will come about six months to 12 months ahead of time. So about six to 12 months before, you start bundling the product together. You say, 
well, if you want to buy a printing press from me, you also need to buy a maintenance contract. And you create a bundle of a service, the maintenance contract in this case, and the product, the printing press. What you effectively do is you create a new standard in the market. So when the competitor comes six to 12 months down the road and offers to your customers only a printing press, your customers probably say, yeah, but I don't just want the printing press because now I'm used to also having a maintenance contract that goes with it, which means you also need to propose a maintenance contract, which effectively means you have raised the cost of entry for the rival because they need to enter two industries instead of one. So bundling is not allowed. If bundling leads to the disappearance of an independent service market, the maintenance contract in our case, so that a potential entrant would have to do both the product and the service market. Specialization is not possible. In other cases, bundling is used to create price opacity. Sometimes companies put so many different elements into the same product that it is impossible for you to really compare. Look at credit cards, for example. Some credit cards only have payment functions, but others have an insurance and this type of insurance, and they have a concierge service, and they have another service. And the whole bundle makes so much confusion among consumers that it makes it really hard for them to compare products of different competitors, especially if different players in the market use different bundles. So if bundling is used as a tool to create obscure pricing, for example, by putting many products together that cannot be purchased individually, it's also not allowed. And finally, bundling is not allowed when it is used to extend market power from one market to the other. So if you have a monopoly in one market, assume you're a monopolist in printing presses, and you also want to become a monopolist in the maintenance market, and you use one market power to extend into the other, it's not allowed. There are many, many cases of bundling or what is called tying, the practice of selling a product and service as a mandatory addition to another product that can be illegal. Look at Apple, for example, who at the very beginning, when the first iPhone was launched in the US, tied the iPhone to having a contract at a certain network provider, AT&T. Or look at Microsoft, which at some point tended to tie their Microsoft operating system together with certain types of products like the internet browser. If you are more interested in the relationship between price bundling and antitrust, go on Wikipedia, go on Google. There are lots of different examples. And whenever there is usually a lawsuit around antitrust and pricing, it very often falls into this specific category. And now we move on and we talk about customer value perception. 